Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays for part 2 of your weekly Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 update where I'll go through and talk about what uh, Mike and Mark have been up to in the last in the last stream. And as ever we're sponsored by Treefoil.be. Go to treefoil.be slash Lawrence Plays, use the code Lawrence Plays on checkout and you'll get your first month free. So let's see what's been going on here. Well uh, Mark has been very busy expanding big oil to make it well even bigger oil so it's now taking up an even larger area here so in in, in, a, in order to do this he's, he's put in lots more machines that are around here these, these are the ones that are converting the crude oil straight into um, straight into petroleum gas and I think he might have possibly extended the ones that are making light oil as well down here I'm not quite sure I do find it quite entertaining that the um, the massive oil refining and therefore presumably sort of you're thinking dirty hydrocarbons um, fossil fuel industry area has also got quite a lot of solar panels in it and we haven't got a great deal of solar panels anywhere else in the factory so it's, it's sort of amusing that they're that they're here filling in these gaps but you know it's going to provide a bit of power so the main reason he's done this expansion over here and we need so much more petroleum gas is because we were running very very low on sulfuric acid in the previous uh, in the previous uh, couple of weeks so we've got now these massive tanks across here and these are all actually basically full which is quite impressive and that is because now we've now got even more sulfur production um, and possibly even even more sulfur production down here which is feeding to further sulfuric acid production down here um Oh no, it's being, no sorry, the other, uh, no I take that back, the sulphur for the sulfuric acid down here is being made on site, so it's being made in these these chemical plants and then just direct inserted from these into, into the ones that are making the actual acid itself. So we've got, but this, is mean, this means now we've, instead of having, um, basically instead of having two rows of machines making acid, or maybe we only had one of those before, I honestly can't remember, um, and then we've now got some extra additional down here and then it's all linked up with the pipes that run along here we've got pumps to keep it to make sure it all flows in the right direction and to keep it under pressure and additional pumps coming out of these two rows and then this is all passed up the long pipe all the way up here into the station where we're storing quite a lot of it and we've now as you can see we've now got more um, sulfuric acid than we need so we have actually solved the problem for now now I have every confidence in our abilities to use resources in much much higher quantities that will then require us to need significantly more of this in the future but for now everything seems to be fine and what's quite clever about the way this system is set up is that there's quite a bit of room to well actually I was going to say there's quite a bit of room to expand down this way there isn't really but maybe we could do something with these rails if we absolutely needed to so we could have more 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 stuff down here and if we needed to transport things around quicker we could just extend these railway lines a bit across this way and double the size of all these stations with relatively little relatively little um, hassle uh, that might, might might mean we'd need more input belts and, and faster throughput and so on of the of the input resources sure but we could put bigger trains in here if we wanted to we could even if we did that we could then even have a mirror of the whole big oil system over here feeding all of the petroleum gas in on from the other side but that might be going a little bit too far i don't know we'll see we'll see what's re required in the future but there's definitely potential to have bigger trains in here although that said actually if we did have bigger trains they wouldn't fit into this stacker so maybe we won't be doing that the other big change that's been made up here is he's gone through and put through put uh, modules into all of these machines. So as you can see, now if, if I take a look in, in this one, we've got a speed module and two productivity modules. And the productivity modules will give us an extra 6% productivity each. And that means each time the machine runs, you'll get 6% of an extra free bonus output. Um, so 6% extra output for the same amount of inputs. However, each of those will give you a minus 15% um, speed penalty minus 15% penalty a 15% penalty it makes it 15% slower um, however the speed modules give you a 30% speed boost so this one speed module will, ca will cancel out the two productivity modules granted they also have a um, fair fairly high spikes on energy energy consumption so you get an extra 60% for each of these and then another 60% for this one so that means that we're going to get a plus 180 so these each of these machines is using almost three times the amount of power you can see down there it says plus 180% so that's a hundred the normal hundred plus an additional 180% uh, plus 14 kilowatts idle power which we don't really care about because it's nothing compared to the rest of it so we're using yeah we these are now using almost three times the amount of power that they were using before but they are producing six percent no twelve percent because there's two modules in them twelve percent more um, petroleum gas on the output for um, for the same amount of input from mere um, yeah three tripling of the speed of the power consumption however we're not too worried about power consumption because we have this massive area up here which is kind of noisy um, I'll lower the volume for that a bit for you um, this massive massive area up here that's as it says is, is the, the free power area that's just turning 
time and solar and energy and just just mostly time and water into large quantities of electricity so that's working really well producing us loads of electricity and that's keeping the whole system running and if we have a look at one of, if we have a look at the power network over the last i don't know how long um that's the wrong one that's a that's an isolated one let's look at the actual power network by clicking on maybe that that one probably there we go that's better so over the last um, hour or so you can see we produce we're producing 1.2 gigawatts basically fa fairly steady uh, from the from the uh, gas power stations at this free power system those power those um, solar panels I pointed out earlier are producing a whole 54 megawatts so I mean it's, it's not insignificant but it's also not particularly significant. We've also got some wind turbines that are producing almost nothing. <laughs> We've still got the uh, damaged ship reactor that came free at the start of the game. Um, and that's producing 200 kilowatts. That's... That, that is practically nothing and we're using we're generating almost no power out of the um, out of the accumulators but as you can see up here we have plenty of power available from the from the um the, the gas turbine the free power system so we're doing okay for power at the moment we don't need to yeah we don't need to worry about it this sort of feels not not cheaty but it sort of feels slightly imbalanced except if you think about the way it works it's kind of like a more complicated version of solar so it takes a bit more effort to put down but it works all the time so i'd say it's sort of balanced from a gameplay point of view because it's no it, it it's harder to put down than solar but it has some advantages like you don't need to put down it, it, like it works all the time so you don't need to put down accumulators so i think this is i think this is fair this is a, a perfectly fair system and to be honest i think this plus a system like this where we use excess electricity to turn it into steam to charge up steam batteries to then be able to produce power so we could have another one of these to power the factory overnight if we're going for this rather than using um rather than the traditional way of having solar and accumulators we could have solar and a steam battery so you know there are ways to get around um, and around all these sort of all these sort of problems and so i find i reckon that this is not in balance it's just another way of generating power Anyway, that's taken me away from big oil a bit. That's a bit of a distraction. So yes, over here we are. Yes, we're using three times the amount of power, but it's getting us a bit more oil. And in Crestorio 2, oil is not unlimited like it is in um, in vanilla. So we, um, we having having something that boosts the amount of output we get from the oil is quite useful. We are getting a certain amount of oil from the core mining, of course, over here. The, the here the core fragment processing does produce oil. But it doesn't produce a huge amount of it. We are, I mean, we're, we're collecting it in the station here, and then every so often a train will come along, take it away, and take it over to be processed in big oil. But this is more of this is a sort of a, a top up rather than a uh, rather than, or at least this this is sort of this is a, a little bit of free stuff that we're using because it's nice to have free stuff. But it doesn't it doesn't um, it doesn't produce anything like enough to make up for the uh, for the slowdown for the for the uh, for the amount we're getting through in the in the rest of the factory. So we do have various oil mines. Speaking of, Mark opened an additional oil mine up here. So there's a little patch here that feeds through an incredibly long belt over here. And I think this is bad for UPS. So we should probably replace all of this with undergrounds at some point. Just to make things a little bit better. Um, and then another little patch over here. Both of which are feeding into this station. Which is connected to the network in the normal way. And trains can come out and grab it as, on the, as a lower priority compared to the, compared to the core processing. Uh, they can come out and grab it and take it away to be processed. In, 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 in the same way that all the rest of the oil stuff is being processed. So yeah, that, that's good. Presumably he's put this in because we had a shortage. Or maybe he's just being a bit more a bit completionist and, and planning for the future. I'm not sure. While I'm talking about oil, it's also quite notable, uh, and or rather worth noting, that uh, Mark has used uh, quite a lot of steel pipes and steel pumps in here. And these are, they're the same basic idea as the standard iron pipes, but where you see this says a certain amount out of 100, these are out of 125. And that means you can get higher flow rates through them because of the slightly dodged, because the pipes are essentially that little bit bigger, you can get somewhat higher flow rate through, and they'll generally be, you'll get a bit more stuff through per per unit of time so that they that presumably will give us an extra a 25 percent boost to flow i think we've also got let's see these are um 12 000 per, per second maximum pumping speed and these are 18 000 per second so the pumps are slightly better as well uh that's less relevant because the pipes tend to be the limiting factor now if we had if we had these loading tra loading and unloading trains then that'd be a bit quicker or if we had them going directly from one tank into another tank then yes they'd be a bit better but when they're just feeding into pipes i don't think that makes a significant difference but you know it, it, it can't hurt to try He's also pushed the Roboport network out over this way as well. So as you can see, we've now got everything from the, the entire bus mall area and, and the um, and the areas up here where we're making uh, the, the circuits and big oil and a little bit of the um, a little bit of the 
uh, smeltery area are all now on the main Roboport network, which is... I mean, it on the one hand, it's useful because it means if we want to make anything in, out here, it can be made with stuff that's just pulled straight across from here by construction bots. On the other hand, if a construction bot needs to fly from here to here, it's going to take about three days to get there because bots at this stage of the game are very, very slow. In fact, even, even in late game space exploration, they're still pretty slow. The only mod that I've played where you get really, really fast bots is Angel Bobs, and that they're a long, long, long way in. So at the moment, it's... It's it's good because you can drop down a blueprint over here and it will happen, but it's all but it will take a very very long time for it to happen. So it sort of it lulls you into a bit of a false sense of security. But you know I can't really complain because it, it is sometimes useful. I I was using it last it, as well to, to to create this stuff around here. And when I boost this up, it'll it'll be nice to have it and it'll be it will make things a little bit easier. So I'm not actually complaining. I'm just aware that it takes a very very long time to provide stuff. He's also put some more stuff on the mall. Let's see if I can find any of it. Um, there was steel. I, I saw steel pipes earlier, uh, as I was as I was talking about. Um, I can't find them right now, but I'm I'm sure they're in there somewhere. He started making assembly machine threes. That that's that's up here. Uh, this is seriously spaghettied in. But then at this stage, I mean, I think it. You you have a, at this point you have a choice between either ripping up all of well all of the, all of this bit that's making the. Uh, tier 0, 1 and 2 assembly machines and rebuilding it at the other end of the bus where all of everything is available and there's a bit more space in order to make the threes <clears throat> or you just sort of spaghetti in a system like this well we what does he need he needs it needs a steel gears apparently so we've got steel coming in so that's not too bad um it needs big end big big electric motors which appear to be here already because they're in use for i don't know what okay no he spaghetti those in because they're not being used by anything else so that's been spaghettied up here like this red circuits were already here because they're used for the um, the advanced radars so that wasn't too bad. The steel gears I mentioned, but steel was already here. Concrete has been spaghettied in, especially for this. I'm slightly surprised that's not ne needed for the um, for the radars, but no, it looks like we're only using stone bricks in there. And then the um, the assembly machine twos have been spaghettied up from down here. So it's kind of it it is rather spaghetti in order to get all of this up here. But on the other hand, it does mean it means you're not trying to fly these around by bot, which which I find fairly objectionable, especially at this stage of the game, uh, when we don't have we aren't able to make blue uh, re uh, requester chests yet. And also, it saves you from having to rebuild all of this stuff at the other end. So, yes and no. I mean, it it, it sort of makes sense. I, it, it's just a bit ugly, <laughs> I guess. Uh, I wonder if he's changed the number on this. this. No, this is still saying we want to have always have at least 200 of these belts, uh, these machi assembly machines. That should probably be dropped quite a lot, maybe down to about 20, um, because I don't think we're going to be using any of the blue assembly machines in the future. We're just going to be now that these are available on, on the network. We're just going. We're, whilst we might not bother upgrading absolutely every machine to a green one, we're not going to use any new any blue ones in new builds because. Well, why would we? So that should probably be dropped down, and so we just just to stop us stockpiling quite as many of them. However, the nice thing is that as we upgrade stuff, so for example, if I come in here and I say I want to upgrade all of these assembly machines here, there's a couple of belts, a piece of belt in there as well, but I don't care about that. The bots will come in, and if this has been set up properly, which it has, they'll come in, they'll grab the um, the tier three assembly machines from here, bring them over, drop them off over here as the up as, as the build to build the upgrade like that. Do -do 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 and then these will all be brought in and dropped into this chest here where they will then be brought up this belt and used for the upgrades so this means we're not just filling up the chests of shame with all of the assembly machine twos when we do an upgrade they all they've all gone in here and we've now got more than the 200 we are supposed to have and they'll be gradually fed, brought up here fed in and we'll turn them into um, into assembly machine threes in order to restock this this chest which is supposed to always have at least 250 but now only has 232 because we've just used some so this this machine is now going to run until that's until that's got to the right number again so yeah that's working nicely the next thing to talk about is the re is this belt here this is I, I don't know I, I yeah, it, it's sort of horrible and objectionable but on the other hand it's sort of a sensible way of doing things so because we've moved on from using uh, radar ones to radar twos we don't actually need to stock radar ones down here anymore uh, so that's why this is, no, this is set to less to, 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 to have to try and keep 20 of them whereas we're trying to keep at least 50 of the better radar I'm sure whatever so what we're doing here is these are then being the radars are being taken away passed around here all the way down this fairly long belt down to here 
where they're being passed in here, mixed with some explosives. And those are then being brought up here to be turned into artillery shells, uh, which, are, which look rather different in, in uh, Crastorio or Space Exploration. I don't know which is called the new graphics. But whichever one it is, they now look quite different. Um, but they're a fairly, fairly similar recipe. So it's steel and plastic to make the... Um, uh, and, and explosives to make the uh, tank cannon shells and then those and radars and more explosives to make the artillery shells so we're making those at a at a rate there's quite a lot of machines making these they're then being chucked in a box up here which is now absolutely full and presumably they are somehow being put onto a onto an artillery train i don't know where the artillery train is being kept i'm going to guess it's here no it's not here i i don't know where the artillery train is being kept but we do have an artillery train now those are also being made on the bus somewhere. I found them earlier. Ah, here we go. Um, yes, yeah, so this has been cobbled in on top of what's this? This is this is the mining drills and power pile and pylon production area, which is kind of horrendous. But I mean, this, this may cause problems later when we want to expand to making um, tier three mining drills. But for now, I. Yeah, it, it's it's a bit spaghetti. I think I've been being a bad influence on Mark because he's got he's he's got very very spaghetti with some of these builds. But up here we are indeed making. We are oh, actually no. To be fair, I um I started the horribleness up here with this putting by putting this um the fuel processing machines are those fuel processing fuel refiner fuel refineries in up here. So uh, yeah, okay, I started it. And Mark has merely merely come come in and, and continued the the horror. Um, so we've got up here, we've got the artillery cannons, then we're making them into artillery wagons by making wagons on site and, and then putting those in, into the red chest down here. So, you know, you can just request these things when you need them, when you when you want to build a, um, an artillery train. That's not too bad. Um, this actually, that said, all of the, I think pretty much all of the ingredients here were already being brought in yes because we've got the we've got the concrete and the steel already for the uh, for the fuel refineries we've got we already had the uh, the more steel and the uh, the the rare metals uh, these were being used for the for the mark II drills um yeah okay so he hasn't actually brought in any new components he's just sort of spaghetti them all together up here to make to make the uh, the, the, the the guns and the wagons so yeah can't complain about that too much well i can but it'd be a bit hypocritical <laughs> Uh, so those have then been used. We brought an artillery train out over here and cleaned out all of those worms from this area that had been um, harassing us, should we say, um, <clears throat> that had been, had been a little bit of a problem for a while. Or at least we'd come in here, we cleaned out all of the nests. And by we, I mean Mike and a little bit of Tristan, but mostly Mike. Uh, so this was then brought, they, we then brought in the artillery train to tidy up the the worms that hadn't been dealt with because Mike had run out of, of, um, of railgun ammunition and um, because it's kind of just dangerous. Uh, so that's the yeah, cleaned out this area. Mark has also put in a big, long, um, actually properly defended wall with massive quantities of laser turrets along here. And this area up here has been tidied up a bit, liberated from the aliens, should we say? <clears throat> now, what is quite interesting, I've discovered, if I can find actually, if, if I can even find the artillery train, then I shall show you. Here it is. Right. So here, here is the artillery train. It's um, quite nice and big, as you can see. Um, but it's not actually firing, even though there's a nest right here. So if I take that out of my inventory, you can see that the artillery in... Um, I don't know whether this is space exploration or Crastorio. I'm suspecting Crastorio because I usually do suspect Crastorio. But you can see, yes, the artillery range is actually quite short. Um, I don't know how, how clearly you can see the uh, the range of it here, which is why I'm waving the mouse around the edge of it. But we've got the range only comes out to about here. And the inner range, the minimum range, is also quite... It feels like it might be bigger. I'm not sure, but there's there's only a fairly small donut of area where we can where the artillery will work. However, if you get an artillery remote, then the range becomes absolutely immense. So we've got from the train up here, it's all the way out to about here, all the way out to here. So it's the the manual artillery range is far far bigger than it was before, but the automatic range is significantly smaller, which is quite interesting. I um. I, I don't know why. I don't know why they, why it's been changed like that. But it's, it's an interesting. It's an interesting change, and makes the artillery much more manual to use. So I'm not sure how I feel about that. Um, it means you can. It means you can go out and sort of clear out an enormous number of biters if you're there and looking after it and babysitting it uh, with a sort of abs with a click clicking frenzy on all of the nests. But on the other hand, it won't automatically clear out a particularly enormous area all by itself. Now, of course, in the future, we're going to get lots and lots of artillery research that's going to increase the range of this and the fire rate and all and, and, and so on. Um, actually, just those two things, I think. Uh, which is, So, yeah, the range will increase and it'll get a bit more effective. But at the moment, it feels a little bit weird because I'm... Having using artillery in manual mode, 
yes, it's sort of it's sort of satisfying to an extent, but it doesn't feel quite right somehow. So, yeah, I don't know. It's a bit of it's a bit of an odd change, is what I'm trying to say. Um, Mark says he's also finished the belt, which is the one I mentioned last week. This enormity that goes all the way around the perimeter of the um, of the uh, is it well the, all the perimeter of the, the entire perimeter of the, the core of the factory, I guess. So it goes up here, round round this area, down here, across here, round round this. I'll, I'll, I'll highlight it so you can see. Basically, round the round, all the way around the outside of everything we care about, I suppose is possibly the best way to put it. Um, we, we, so we've not included some of the some of the sort of the really distant mines, the free power area. These are all these are all using their own um, pollution cleaning up systems. So up here, yes, we do have pollution cleaners, so they are being cleaned. But this air, all this area around here is kept inside the um, the internal one. So yeah, and apparently it's not keeping up over here, or maybe it's just that that was already out there. But he has also, he says, he's dropped it down to the, uh, he's reduced the number of um, th that are fed out. So, oh, there we go. Yeah. So there's a little bit of yellow belt in here. That's quite a clever way of um, halving the amount of uh, throughput. So, uh, the, we, I think it was felt that having a solid belt of um, these filters going around was a little bit wasteful. We didn't need that many uh, filters going around. And as you can see, there's lots of clean ones coming back in over here. So there's clearly far more than is needed. We could probably reduce this further. And just and this and reducing it like this means that we don't have as many on the belt, <clears throat> and therefore we don't have quite as many that are just that are being that have been made and are just sitting out there. So as you can see, this this belt is is gradually ticking up there like that, uh, like that, as we're putting a few more into the system. Uh, to try and keep up with the ones that are being taken out and used up, um, so it, it, they do they do get passed around. And it, but the, the fewer we can have on, if we can have fewer on this belt, then that means we don't need to make as many in order to keep everything full. But as we discussed last time, there's a huge number of them backed up in the system over here. So it's going to be a very very long time until we actually need to make any more of the any more of the filters. So that covers a lot a lot of what Mark has been up to, but there's one final thing I want to touch on. And that is this. So this is a this is a blueprint he put together in the sort of towards the end of the stream. And this is in this is in the sandbox area. So it's a bit like playing with Creative Mod. It's an area where you can just go in, mess around a bit, come up with designs for stuff that you that you want to sort of when you just want to play around with ideas. And this is a system that takes in core chunks over here. And then produces delivery cannon capsules over here. So what the, the way the system works is it'll it'll take those in, it'll it'll pulverize them down in order to get all of the resources that, that that come out of them, and all of those are being then fed into this into this chest here. So we've got we've got a supply of copper and of, of, of copper ore, iron ore, stone, uh, raw, uh, rare metals, and so on. It's all being all being fed into here. And then we've got a bit of wood being created for reasons I'm not 100% sure of. Oh yes, that's in order to make uh, make coke, in order to make the uh, the steel down here, in order to make all of the bits and pieces. So we've got yes, yeah, so it makes so this makes all of the all of the stuff. So we've got plastics and sulfur and explosives and everything that go into making, including even the low density structures that go into making the. Um, the delivery cannon capsules and it looks like the low density structures are the, the the limiting factor of this and that's because there's that looks like it's because there's just three machines making them um but this means we are trickling out a steady supply of um of delivery cannon capsules so the idea is you can go out slap this down on a remote planet crush the the um, interesting delivery cannon it's sorry interesting core fragments into a, a resource and the um, and the core fragments and then hopefully we're going to then be able to turn all of that into. We're then going to be able to use the delivery cannons that are made from that to to launch the um, uh, to, to launch the bring the, the new resource back to Norvis and also take away all of this excess that's coming out over here as well. Now there's going to need to be a bit of processing done over here, and we've done made a start on that by processing the the stone down into sand and then into glass because you can stack it because that means you can put a lot more. You can put. Um, if you've got a certain amount of stone, it takes fewer delivery cannons to ship it if you turn it into glass first than if you ship it as stone. Uh, the other, the other things over here, maybe we'll smelt the um, the, the stone down into, sorry, the the iron and the copper into into their material, into their metals. Uh, maybe we won't. I don't know. We'll probably end up having to use the coal in order to generate the oil that's, through coal liquefaction that's going in here. Um, so that's going to make that a little bit harder, especially as we haven't really got that research up and running yet. But in order, yeah, in order to keep it running, this this system does require an input of oil and of water. Uh, the oil and water produced by the um, by the core fragment crushing is not sufficient. We are blowing off the um, 
uh, the mineral water here. We don't intend to blow off the pyroflux because you don't produce very much of that and we're probably just going to turn that into um, into electricity or maybe use it to smelt the um, the iron and or copper down here as well. We'll, we'll see about that but that's going to require acid as well so that's extra complications. Maybe we won't do that. But this, this is going to be very very useful as a thing we can just drop in on remote planets in order to get delivery of stuff up and running. Now, whether it's going to be fast enough, whether the the, the, the uh, number of core fragments we use up here in order to get the in order to make these these capsules um, is going to be balanced with the number of core fragments we have available from make, from dealing with the um, the uh, the more the exotic resources, we we shall have to wait and see about that. I, I could see it going either way. If there's not if there's too many core fragments, then we can end up shipping some of those as well. If there's not enough, then things are going to be tricky. We're going to have to we're going to have to make decisions about it and see and see what we do. What's this do? Oh, it's brightness. Okay, cool. Uh, we're going to have to yeah see see what see what we can do about that. So there's yes there's some plans and experiments to be done there. So that brings me to the end of uh, Mark's update, uh, and so now let's let's have a look at what Mike's been up to. Um, before I do, I would like to take a, take a moment to say thank you for watching the video. I hope you're enjoying it. If you do enjoy my videos, please make sure you subscribe to the channel because um, having having more people subscribe is, is, it gives the channel an incredible boost. Um, the more subscribers I have, the more people YouTube shows the video to, uh, the better the better the chances are of the channel growing. So I would really appreciate it if you can, if you if you could could subscribe to the channel. But I won't go on about that for any, any longer. Mike's big thing at the moment has been uh, getting the steel production uh, improved because we've, as, as I was t touching on in the uh, in the previous video, when we're looking up in uh, in Norvis orbit, there's a massive steel shortage up here. There's a steel shortage down down on Norvis as well. We basically we haven't been making enough steel for quite a long time. So if we, if we look over here in the steel station, you steel, yes, you're steel. Um, you can see there's 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 very small amounts of steel in these in these chair in these warehouses. It, 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 it's a problem, and it still is a problem. So, in order to try and improve the, this, he's done a number of things. So, starting from the beginning, he's put in an additional train that brings in the uh, brings in the iron ore to try and keep these these satisfied. And it appears that that is is it enough? It I don't know. There seems to be an empty train. Um, I don't know why there's an empty train sat here. What are you? You're a oh, you're an iron ah, you're an iron plate dealing with train. Okay, so there are there are currently three trains out there bringing in um, iron ore to be dropped off here. To be put into into the smelting system, so that that's 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 busy, um, but that does seem to be able to keep up because as you'll notice, these are not empty, and the next train hasn't arrived yet. So, the uh, yeah, that's the that's the first change. The second change is up here where he's put in speed modules into all of the uh, all the production st steps for making iron. So the uh, producing the um, what's this? Is it the enriched iron, which we do with the with the sulfuric acid, um, and uh, is is now being is now being speed moduled. So we are now producing at um, 90% faster, so almost twice as fast as before. So that means we're getting through almost twice as much iron ore, and that's why there's now t twice as many belts coming in here. So you can see you've got the main belt coming up here, and then the second one sort of spaghetti's underneath the uh, all the pipes along here, and then is sort of passed out and fed onto the. Uh, oh no, it's going to go through a splitter, so it's essentially fed onto this one. So we've got twice as much iron ore coming in, so that's good. We've got we've had a nice boost from that, and that's that's allowing us to keep up with the extra speed on these um, on these. Um, on these machines. Then up here, same thing again, but there's only room for two uh, speed modules in each of these. So this is only a, only had a 60% boost, but I think we might have more... No, I don't think we do have more um, more, more smelting machines. But once again, we've got this the double belt thing going on here and then merging them up here. So we are, we're we passing all of that through. It does seem to be able to uh, keep up and, and, and cook it all, which is quite nice. And that means we've now got a bit more iron coming out here. Presumably, I mean... If we've got twice as many belts coming in, this is twice, and this is almost twice as fast, and it's running flat out. Presumably, we've basically doubled the amount we're producing. So we've got a nice, healthy one, two, three, four, five, six belts coming of um, of iron coming down here. It's it's wiggled a little bit through. Um, Mike has has described it as spaghetti intensifies, I think. No, sorry, spaghetti increases. He's he's not quite as memey as that. So more spaghetti coming down here, going in here, and then we're feeding that out to the um, to the station down here, which, as you can see, is nearly full. We are, well, actually, no. This this what this warehouse is 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 basically is, is is as full as it gets. And then, but these ones appear to be empty, which is interesting. Um, I'm surprised they're going down to actually empty when they're not being filled up. Um, I suppose we've got for five belts going in here and four yellow belts coming out, and apparently yellow belts are insufficient to keep these trains happy. So. Uh, maybe these need to be upgraded uh, fairly soon. Um, 
we, we shall see. But that means that the the other half of the um, of the iron, uh, in fact, it's, it's probably more than half of it. The rest the rest of the iron can then be passed all the way along here, up here, and into the into the steel smeltery. <clears throat> and over here, we we noticed that the um, the amount of iron coming in was not remotely enough to keep the number of furnaces we've got here satisfied. So what we've done, or when I say we, when I say we, I mean Mike. Uh, what Mike has done is he's put productivity modules into well some of the furnaces. I suspect the problem is here that we ran out of productivity modules because we're not making them all that fast, which I shall touch on again in a moment. So yeah, we're making the um, productivity modules up here to make that. That means up here, we any any steel that goes is made by these furnaces. We're getting that 12% um, boost, so we're getting a bit more out for, for the input. Um, but it is running a bit slower, which means it's now the steel runs a bit further down, and we've got some more of these smelters running. And these ones are not productivity moduled, um, so they're not being more efficient. But it does mean we're getting. Well, if these are running at half speed and we've got just as many running again, we're probably getting an extra third of a 12%. So maybe we're getting a 4% boost from this. I think we need we need more productivity modules over here since we've got so many smelteries uh, trying to produce it. But that does mean a little bit more uh, steel coming through. But again, as you can see, it's it's not capable of keeping these, these trains satisfied. We uh, we still need more. Um, and I think the plan for the future for this is, is for Mike to then have to rip up the entire smelting system yet again and, and and move over to the um to the to the um pyroflux based smelting and if we have a look in fnei we can see that you can you can take in your um iron ore and you can do various things with it you can you can so you can you can turn it into enriched iron which is what we're doing at the moment i don't know why there are so many recipes in here are there more exciting things you make it so you can make it into plates which is terrible because it's only 75 percent effective you can make it into iron ore, which produces the same amount of enriched iron. So, but but it does use sulfuric acid, and that's why Mark had to make more sulfuric acid. It was for this uh, landfill iron beam. Oh, interesting. You can. Oh, later on with advanced assembling machines, you can turn iron ore straight into iron beams. We'll have to look to see whether these recipes are more efficient or not. I assume they are, because otherwise they probably wouldn't be here. Um, and much very very late game stuff. But what we care about at the moment is the enriched iron, and then the enriched iron uh, again late game stuff. Can be turned into can be turned into iron plate five to five. So that means that's one to one iron ore to iron plates. This is what we're doing at the moment, and that's working quite nicely. What we're looking for potentially to do in the future is to turn. Then you can turn the enriched iron and some pyroflux into uh, that's about thirty times as much molten iron. And then the molten iron can be turned into iron ingots at two hundred fifty to one, uh, which can then be turned into iron plates at one to ten. So that's twenty five. So this. This stage was about 30 to 1. This and then these two stages are about 25 to 1. So again, that's going to be that's going to be quite a boost in the um, in the amount of uh, a bit of a boost in the amount of steel we can get out. But once again, it does you it uses the pyroflux, which and, and, and requires us to get this sort of system up and running and a different type of uh, industry a different type of machine using it as well. The other bonus of using the industrial furnace, though, is you can put more modules in it. Um, does it tell me in here? It does not. Um, so I put down let's put down an industrial furnace in here so I can open it up and have a look. So we've put down an industrial furnace uh, to make. Um, molten iron you'll see that this this takes five um, modules so we could whack this really full of productivity modules and we probably would need to start thinking about beacons at this point so I think we'll probably get them to do a massive rebuild when we can switch over to industrial furnaces and start using beacons at that point we can have we can fill this up with um, productivity modules and even with the even with only using the productivity twos that will still get us a 30% boost which is quite significant especially if we then go through and put that boost and then have a especially as we'll then be able to have a an 18% boost on the on this stage and there and and so on so basically we'll we'll, we'll get we'll get a, we'll get serious boosts through all the way through on each stage so the 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 first one here where we here we go this stage will be done in a chemical plant so that'll get us an 18% boost this stage will be done in an, in an industrial furnace, so we can get a 30% boost out of that. This stage is done in a casting machine, and I don't know how many modules you can put in one of those, but it's probably several. Uh, let, um, maybe, let's say it's two, two of them, in which case you get 12% boost. In fact, let's look it up. Um, casting machine. Guess, yeah, okay, so it's two. So you get a 12% boost from that. And then finally, you can get... A, if this is an assembly machine, so depending on which ones we use, if we use assembly machine threes, that gets us another four modules, which is another 24% boost. And I shall put up the total of that on screen here. But as you can see, that's quite a big improvement over what we have what we have going already.
The problem is it's going to need a massive redesign and it's going to take up a lot more space. So maybe we'll we'll take the um, the iron processing away from here, put it somewhere else, maybe up here where there's a nice big space, and just expand it out. And then at some point in the future, we'll do the same thing for copper as well. Um, and this will just be a the, the the smelting facility will then be several times bigger, um, but it will allow us to produce a lot more a lot more of everything from the same amount of input. And the hope is that eventually, if you get enough of this sort of boosting going on, and if we get all of these, and these are all filled up with productivity modules now, so that's that's what, what we're looking at here. We're looking at a 24% boost from productivity out of these. You can then get hopefully that's we'll get to the point where we're starting to most of the what we're doing will be coming from the um coming from the core fragment processing rather than from the mining and that means we'll we we'll, we won't need to worry about these mines up here running out because each time i look at them they get lower um because we're pulling a lot of iron ore out of these mines and we've had to set up a new one down here and so on so the idea is that we try and we want to try and stop using iron ore um, that's coming out of the mines as much as possible and start using the iron ore that comes out of the core fragment processing because that's unlimited only cost power Ah, that um, that this iron mine down here that I just pointed to, that is another uh, another mic creation. So uh, that's a lot of belts coming out of there. <laughs> wow. Um, I mean, he's he's done the sort of the staggered thing as I mentioned before, where you have lots and lots of separate rows of um, of machines. And then with with these long belts, you can have three. Yeah, you can have three three um, parallel belts coming out of each column of machines if you stagger all of the mining drills like this. Um, that means you can you can fit more mine more drills in. You can have more belts coming out, and then if you have any sort of shortage of, of, of the iron, you can pull a lot, a lot more through. Um, we're still limited to the number of belts we can cram into one of these these things, but you know it it, it it's, it's nice. It, it brings in we mean to bring potentially. I think we could probably pull the um, the iron ore out quite a bit faster with this than we would be able to otherwise. So that's lovely. Uh, he finished off his heat shield production system up here. I mean, he, I, he did say this needs expanding. At the moment, it's a bit too small and it's a bit too iron. Uh, sorry, steel starved. Um, you can see how all of these sort of problems are starting to pull in towards the same same sort of ground, same sort of basic issues. And this is why steel is such a big deal at the moment. Um, but yeah, we've got the sulfur and the stone bricks coming in here, but not the steel. And then up here, this is the design I made ages ago, right at the start of the um, the run, when, or right, 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 much earlier on when we started making the heat shield tiles. Because you can take you can take in bricks in, in a machine here. You, you slice them up into into these stone wafers or, st or whatever they're called, and then you can feed them down a belt like this. And, and one of these machines will feed five of these machines, so that's the right ratio. It just works nicely. And then you can have lots of them running off little sort of mini buses going off like this, making up, building up your um, uh, your heat shield tiles that can then be dumped out into a station here. And as not, it does exactly what you'd expect. And we've got a whole. Um, about 200 and 200 or 234 of them in the warehouse here, which is not a train load. Um, but once we have a once we have a steady, reliable steel supply, we have, we'll have the trains coming out here, dropping off the steel, and we'll have um, have the the uh, heat shield tiles being made and taken off to where they're needed. So eventually, this will work. Re this will work really, really nicely. But that's um, <laughs> there is a bit of, a little bit of eventually on that. He's also started making a module town over here. Um, that's a fantastic start. Well done there. Um, as you can see, needs a little bit of work, but eventually we'll hopefully start making the tier one, two, and three productivity modules and probably speed modules uh, here. I think we probably won't bother with the um, efficiency ones. I mean, maybe, maybe we will, maybe we won't. But it's the it's going to be the uh, productivity and the speed ones that are going to be the most valuable and most needed. And we, yeah, those are the ones we're going to be making. And on and you can make on you can there. You can you can make the uh, tier one, two, and three ones on Norvis relatively easily. So if we look at the tier ones, <clears throat> this requires electronic circuits, electronic components, and glass. Well, glass is being made on Norvis, and so are electronic circuits in large numbers. Electronic components are made from plastic, glass, and silicon, which is again made on Norvis in the in the train system. So as you can see over here, we've got uh, the three types of circuits, and we've got glass, and then presumably we're going to pull in plastic and silicon up here. We just haven't done so yet. So that makes you the tier one productivity modules. You then might want to make tier two, which requires green and red circuits, those ones, and sulfur. So we'll need to pull in sulfur as well. That's going to be another station up here. So this is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, but that's okay. So you pull in the sulfur. That lets you make the productivity modules two. Then you need vulcanite as well and, and blue circuits for tier three. And vulcanite will be a thing that we have on Norvis. We just haven't yet because I'm uh, at some point somebody's going to need to go off and get some of that. So that's a thing. Uh, if we get back to here, I imagine the speeds are going to be fairly similar, but not quite the same. Now, so this is going to need solid fuel instead of glass, so that's fun. That's going to be another thing to bring in. Then, 
Uh, that's not the one I wanted. This is the one I wanted. Uh, then we're going to need small electric motors. So those are not being made off the bus, but he could bring in iron and copper and make them on site, or uh, this is starting to get a little bit fiddly. Then the tier three, um, speed module threes, are going to require um, imosite crystals. So that's going to be another, that's going to be a thing we need to go out and discover and find and, 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 and start producing. Um, but maybe, I imagine we'll probably be shipping those back to Norvis. Who knows? We shall see. Um, we, uh, we don't know anything about these yet, really, apart from having found little imosite caves on some of the uh, some of the other planets we've looked at. Um, but we'll find out. We'll find out more about these and probably start shipping at least some of them over to Norvis in order to uh, to get this this sort of thing up and running. So that's nearly everything. He also um, overfished this lake down here. So uh, there's still a few fish up here. So it's not been. It's only been a bit of, uh, probably because those are outside Roboport range. Yes. <laughs> so it looks like he just slapped down a deconstruction planner across the lake and claimed all of the fish. Now, I, th I, I there, there, are, there are three possible reasons for this. The first one is he was just being Mike and doing something silly because he, he it, it, the idea amused him and he just wanted to fill the uh, chest of shame up with fish. Um, I don't know where they've gone. Are they in this one? I can't see them. I don't know. Um... They, perhaps they've gone in. Um, oh, or the other possibility. Yeah, this might bring us on to possibility number two, which is a vaguely sensible one, where he wanted to make. The, he, he wanted to put them in because one of the fish are one of the ingredients for making the better med kits. So it's quite possible that they've all gone into. I don't even know where we're here. Um, in, yes, they've all gone into here. So we can now start making. Instead of just making the little med kits, which are called um, what are they called first aid kits, which require wood and stone, uh, sorry, wood, iron and biomatter, of which we've, we've got plenty around here. The second tier up requires the same and also fish to make uh, med packs. So maybe that was why he maybe that was why he claimed all of the fish. Who knows? Uh, why they're stored in a red chest, I wouldn't really like to say. Um, but yeah, maybe, maybe that was part, maybe that was a reason. Or perhaps he was being really, really helpful and he's got those because he knows that at some point in the not too distant future, I'm going to want them for making the product production science pack because in order to make the um, uh, all of these things that are going to require the petroleum stuff, I'm going to need crude oil, which comes from um, uh, through bioprocessing from methane gas eventually, uh, which requires bio sludge, which requ ideally requires requires fish. There we go. I knew it was fish in here somewhere. Um, so so yeah, maybe he's gone off and got those fish for me because he's being just kind and helpful and stuff, you know. <laughs> so maybe, maybe yes, maybe it's maybe it's a somewhat fishy present for me. Who knows? Right. So that's the uh, that's the, that's the main summary done. So the next thing is to think about what's going to happen. Well, actually, no. The next thing is to talk about deaths. And this this last stream actually was was um, surprisingly um, surprisingly safe for everybody. We didn't have a single death in the entire run. So um, I think that's probably at least partly because we've now got artillery to clean these sort of areas out. We've got massive laser walls to keep to keep the biters out over here. And also because Mike was concentrating quite hard on building up heat shielding and um, and and uh, steel down here. So he wasn't actually going out starting fights for a change so that meant we didn't have any deaths this um this run well done so well done there well done everybody clap 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 round of applause for you all including myself of course um right so yes that's de that's the um the death spoken about now the next thing is what are we going to do next time so um next time there's there's quite a lot to be done i think um i'm going to be trying to encourage mike to to be thinking thinking about steel production because that is that is important however um I don't know if we've actually got mod uh, beacons yet. Um, no, we have not got effect transmission, and that's waiting for the production science packs. So, I'm not sure what we're going to, what direction we're going to be pointing Mike in, and it's going to be important to choose something because if we don't, if we don't pick a direction to point him in, he's likely to do something silly, like go off and just try and catch all of the fish on the map. So, suggestions in the comments, please, because we need to give him something. Definitely need to give him something to do. Um, I imagine there's going to be quite a bit of sort of just trying to get everything polished up and, and working nicely around here. Um, Tristan's gone off to the uh, the ice planet as we touched on last time to drack it where he's he's going to be he's going to be getting us a cryonite supply because that's very important. Um, I'm similarly planning to go off to uh, Taishakuten which is a vulcanite planet because we're going to need a lot of vulcanite so that's that's an important one to go off and, and set up there and Taishakuten um, is actually a, a slightly wet vulcanite planet so we've got very lucky with the with the role of the dice here this is it's, it's uh, not a it, the Agnea is a waterless planet so that's going to be difficult to, to generate power on however Taishakuten um, is has puddles so it's it's similar to this planet in that there aren't massive seas on it like there are on Norvis but there 
are some there's a couple of significant puddles like this that I can go in and tap and tap for water in order to make producing power a lot easier. So I'll be go so my my current my current plan is to is to finish off the lithium processing that I talked about last time and then head off to go and get vulcanite processing up and running. Tristan's going to get the cryonite processing going here. Um, and the other two I'm not quite so sure. Um, so we don't really have much of a to-do list at the moment, but I guess the next thing, the next thing, maybe Mike's next project is going to be um, getting this this uh, module town up and running. Uh, Mark was asking if I wanted him to go off to um, to, to go and get the uh, the vulcanite, and I'm sort of thinking I don't really because I'm not sure what I'd do in that case because uh, I can't get on with production science. I'm sure I'd be able to find something, but I think um, I think I'd quite like to go off and play around with Vulcanite. But we'll 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 see. We'll have it. We'll have a debate and see what we can think of and decide what we want to do in the in the next stream. So make sure you could, don't miss that. Come along on Monday to the uh, to the stream to um, at 7:30 UK time, where we'll be going off and doing all of those sort of things and, and and trying to get everything bigger and better and faster and stronger and and so on. Uh, we'll be investigating delivery cannons, and if we're really lucky, maybe one of us will make a start on production science. But don't hold your breath on that. I suspect it's going to take me most of uh, most of next week's st or stream to uh, to get the uh, the vulcanite up and running, and then the week after, maybe then I can start working on the um, on production science. Um, another thing, oh, methane mining is another thing that that might be done. So we we uh, we've noticed noted that. Um, Kalidas Asteroid Belt 2 is very, very methane heavy. So there's lots and lots of methane ice out here. So we might send someone out there on an, on a, on an expedition to go and try and come up with a way of producing uh, a, a steady supply of methane ice from there in order to turn it into oil back in, in Norbit orbit at some point in the future. Um, but otherwise, I don't know. We shall we shall have to have to see have to have to wait and see what we what we come up with. There'll be, pl be plenty of things. There'll also be a Dyson Sphere program stream on Wednesday. That's my other big stream of the um, of the of, of the week. At the moment, I'm I'm st I've sorted out most of the shortages of of supply for the time being, as far as purple science is concerned. And now I'm starting to think about green science, which is um, doing its best to melt my brain a little bit, should we say? So we're um, that's going to be that, I can see that's going to be a challenge. Um, I've also just started launching parts of my Dyson Sphere, so that's also quite exciting. But there's going to be yeah, there's 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 always more to do there as well. Uh, I'm getting the GTA videos out quite regularly now, so check them out on a Thursday. They're good. They're a lot of fun. Playing cat and mouse around Los Santos. It's not us going through playing GTA missions. Don't worry, it's much more interesting than that. We're playing a game of our own devising, which I strongly recommend checking out. Um, and then there's the catch-up videos at the weekend, which you know all about because you're watching one at the moment. So, thank you very much for watching. Please check out the stream sponsor, that's trefoil.be. Use the code LawrencePlays on checkout to get your first month free. And if you can find all 10 spooky things on their um, on their website in October, you can um, you, you can then enter in the draw to get an additional three months free. So, that's very worth doing. Check them out. They uh, seem to be a good sponsor. We've got a lovely server from them that we've been using for their uh, Factorio run. And it was it worked well for us. And so, as ever, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and, are in, and, and we'll be coming back for the streams and enjoy those too. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.